Buonasera amici di Passion for Fun, siamo ospiti di nuovo qui a Car Gallery insieme a Arild Miton, artista norvegese, fumettista e illustratore conosciuto per le sue storie di Paperino per la rivista Donald Duck Co. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. You started as a cartoonist for magazines such as Mad Magazine Mad, yes. and Python. Yes. Okay. Can you tell us about your original cartoonist? I've been always working with humorous um, stories and comics and I was very influenced by the Mad Magazine, great artists, great jokes and uh, then mainly French-Belgian comics like Asterix ah. and Gaston uh, by André Franquin um, but also realistic um, artists like Jean Chiraud doing Blueberry and then I, I know of course the most Italian artists, wonderful artists and I've had the opportunity now to work with Cavasano which is Il Maestro <laughs> totally I mean i was so flattered when he was asking if I could write the manuscript for a story for him and because he's, he's really, you know, the greatest living Disney artist without any question. In 2004 you changed and joined in Disney. How did this season come about and did you have to change your style? Yes, um, so at that time I was turning 40 years old and Donald Duck was turning 70. At the same time as Vicar, the artist from Chile, but living, well, mostly living in Chile, he spent lots of time here in, in Europe. Um, so he was kind of saying that, well, like a joke, he said he was retiring, Vicar, and the local newspapers, they said that I was going to take over after Vicar, which wasn't the case. It, it, it was just that, Um, my dear friend Tor Mudlöckling, who is also an author, uh, we grew up together and we've been, like now, we are 58 and we've been making comics for the last at least 50 years because we, we were making comics when we went to school together. So in around 2000, uh, Tor Mud became the editor of the weekly magazine Donald Duck and Company. Yeah. And uh, in the Nordic countries, the, um, you have Aku Anka in Finland, and you have Kalle Anka in Sweden, and Anders An in Denmark, and Donald Duck in Norway. We, we kept the American name. These magazines are more or less the same, but it means that you have you know, many hundreds of thousands of readers. So when we started in the beginning of like 2004-2005 Tormund was the editor of the Norwegian Weekly mm. and that, that, that was like in the forefront that, that, that was what set the standard for the other Nordic countries especially Denmark, uh, Norway and Sweden um, so it was a great opportunity for Tormund and I to work together play together like we'd done in school and We just wanted to do one Donald Duck story. We wanted to do one Donald Duck story about the big Nordic war, which was sort of a big story that could be published in all the Nordic countries because, you know, Nordic war, every Nordic country was involved. So, and at the same time as I was going to be, hopefully, which I ended up being, um, being okayed as a, a Disney artist, Um, I started writing some one-page jokes and slowly and not too slowly but slowly and surely it happened quite fast actually I sort of fell in love with just staying in Duckburg you know uh, it was wonderful it it suited my humor it suited my storytelling and I'm not very very funny but I'm sort of like <laughs> funny and that that is sort of like the Donald Duck stories they are not hilarious you know me working for the man magazine but they are nice they are there's so much heart and we, we could tell long stories and shorter stories and I really fell in love with it and on top of it it was actually 
the whole thing about working in the Disney tradition. So at that time I was doing lots of illustrations for, for the newspapers and I, I had my own comic strip that, that was printed in lots of newspapers. But it was so stressful. It was, the format was very small when you're working in a newspaper. And there was so stress with all the deadlines. Here we could, you know, have such a broader perspective. We, we had more time doing longer stories. And I felt it like my breathing went sort of like deeper and more relaxed. And I was just enjoying doing these round, three-dimensional figures. And I really loved it. So I just stayed in Duckburg. Do you take any inspiration from um, others, uh, authors, and um, what are your references? First and foremost, uh, just when I was um, being allowed into Duckburg, I had to go through, kind of, like going through a door, right? And over the door it says Karl Box. Okay, so if you are making drawings in a way that it could be presented side by side, literally side by side with uh, the wonderful work of Karl Box. You are allowed into the Pantheon. You are allowed through the door. And in there you can develop your own style as long as it's, you know, true to uh, Karl Box. Um, not model sheets, you know, it, it's not very strict. It, it's just a way of thinking or the way of telling the stories, you know, so you have to be true to the legacy of Karl Box. So, Karl Box is very difficult to copy because he's, he was, he was a natural. He was just telling the stories, making the drawings, and he was totally self-made. He, he worked in the, in the Disney uh, studios as a gag man, you know, in the beginning, like in the 30s, 1930s you know, soon to be a hundred years ago. So uh, he just invented that style of drawing, you know, building on, of course, Altario Ferro and Floyd Gottfriedsson and all the great Disney artists. But uh, Karl Barks was a natural. He was just telling his story with his ducks and with all the rest of the ducks that he invented, right? So if you were going to copy that kind of a natural maybe the best storyteller of the last century uh, it is very hard it, it, it's like copying the personality of someone you you can't do that but ma what i did was that a dear friend of mine and a wonderful colleague uh, dan yippes he's from holland and he's a wonderful artist so he knew how to copy karl box and I worked very closely together with Dan Yippes. And through his drawings, I sort of understood more of what was behind Karl Barks's stories and the way he was making his drawing. And at the same time, Egmont, um, the Disney publisher in the northern parts of Europe, they have a wonderful art director named Fernando Guell, who is living in Barcelona. I, was, I met him just now this Monday, this week, uh, going through a workshop. So, Fernando is, again, a wonderful artist and he can teach us um, how to, to stay true to that legacy of Karl Box. So, it's Karl Box, it's Karl Box, and it's Karl Box. And on top of that, it's Don Yippes interpreting Karl Box. It's um, Fernando Guell, our art director, you know, trying to teach us something. And then at the same time, I have these wonderful colleagues like Paco Rodriguez, Ferrioli, all of these, they are totally wonderful. And then on top of everything, you have masters like Cavazano. <laughs> so that, 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 that's really my inspiration, yes. What's your favorite duck character and why? Ah, good question. So, it's always Donald Duck because he is the basic of all our stories, okay? So it's his personality that he is governed by his feelings, not his intellect, okay? So if you're telling a story and you need an actor, you will pick Donald. Because 
As long as there are any emotions involved in a story, which it always is, um, you can always use the feelings of Donald. And that is so important. So if you go on an adventure, you can use Scrooge McDuck, of course, and all of his money and resources and his hard work and hard labor and all this. But we don't really connect to Scrooge McDuck or any of the others as we do with Donald Duck. Because Donald Duck, he's got all the failures, he's got all the personality traits that we recognize in our boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, father, yes. neighbor, but not in ourselves, right? Because we are perfect, right? Mm -hmm. We don't see our own shadow, right? But we can see the shadow, we can see the dark side of Dumb Duck. Therefore, we love and hate him because it reminds us of our good girlfriends and boyfriends, <laughs> and not ourselves. It's not us, it's not us, it's Dumb Duck, you see? This is pure genius. This, this is why Donald Duck is such a great character to work with. Having said that, Donald Duck is also the most um, difficult, the most difficult character to, to draw because if you do, you know, Scrooge McDuck, you have, you know, the beard coming up here, you have the glasses, you have the hat, right? With Donald Duck, there is only two things that are difficult to draw, right? It's his eyes, and his beak and his head only exists with the eyes and the beak right there's nothing else there's only yes. the eyes and the beak therefore he is so difficult to draw because you have nothing else you only have the eyes and the beak right with all the others you can put on the glasses you can do this and you can do that and it's a nice drawing but with donald duck it's so revealing if you know the character, if you know how to treat this, this wonderful duck. But he's so simple and therefore he's so hard to draw. So, and on a final note, I must say, the one character that I love to draw the most is Magica the Spell, without any doubt, because she is magical, you know, she is dark, she is like Sophia Loren, she is wonderful, she, has, she is a woman with a mission, you know always what she wants, you know, she wants that coin of Scrooge. She has a reason for everything that she does, and graphically she is wonderful, I mean, yes, with I the black it. hair and, you know, her personality. So anytime, if, if I could do magic or the spell all the time, I would love it, really I would. But then again, Donald Duck is the main character. From the work exhibited here at Car Gallery, I have seen several passages of your works. For example, pencil, ink. Mm. Can you explain these steps? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make it short, right? <laughs> so it starts with an idea, okay? It ends with a printed story, right? In between there, is all about developing the idea you've got. So okay. you're doing a, a pitch, you're just doing a very short description of the story. Then you might do a synopsis explaining what will happen on each page. Then you do a script. And for me and my production team, I have Tormod, as I told you before, and I have Knut Nærum who this Cavazano story, I wrote it together with Knut, because Knut is such a wonderful author. So mainly it's Torm with Knut and I, and then I will do scribbles of the whole story, and I will be partaking in the writing of the story, and some of the stories I've written all by myself, or if, uh, like this six-pager that I did with uh, Francesco uh, Artibani, it's, it's just, I receive a manuscript from him, and then I do my interpretation of the story. Meaning that it's just like putting up, um, and then again, this is the short answer. So, uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it's like making a movie or setting up a play at a theater, right? So you, you have the manuscript, either I write it, after Barney or the, or the authors in our production team, write the script but that's only the start so remember it's the idea it's the idea of the story it's the idea why is donald doing this why do we tell the story 
That is really what is coming up to the surface when you're doing the script, right? So the script with the dialogue and everything, but the scribbles is just like the old storyboards that, that you did or, or you still do for movies. So instead of spending lots of time and money on filming everything, you do you do the storyboards, right? Because then you can see if it's working or not. So scribbles are the most important thing in the whole process. After that, you're just making the drawings. And that's the easy part. So that's that's just, you know, pencil, paper, pen, you scan it, you everything. do. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the easy part. Every, everybody can learn how to, to make a drawing. Can you tell us about the project in collaboration with Giorgio Cavazzano? How did the idea for this site come about? Right, so we were at this Disney summit uh, up by the lake of Garda in 2019, in February, uh, well before the pandemic and everything. So, And I met Il Maestro Cavazzano. I never call him Giorgio Cavazzano, I call it him. Il Maestro, nice. yes. So, but anyways, <laughs> Cavazzano and I was talking because I met him a couple of times before. And just out of the blue, Cavazzano <laughs> said to me that, oh, I know that you're writing some of your own stories. Uh, would you like to do a manuscript for me? You know, like he just said, <laughs> you know, could you please make me a story, you know? And of course, of course, of course I wanted to. And then his first idea was, you know, these lions in front of the Arsenal, Arsenal in, in Venezia. So you have this um, Piraeus. Piraeus is the you know the, the harbor city of Athens uh, in Greek. So these lions um, they were conquered during some of these wars between Greece and and uh, Venezia in I don't know 14, 15 something. Anyway, on one of these lions there are runes. You know runes the yes. the, the Nordic Viking scripture. You know. So Cavazzano thought that maybe we could do something with Vikings in Venice. And when I was checking this, I knew immediately that okay, Piraeus is really in, in Greece, you know. And it was long, long, long after the Vikings and all that. But anyway, so the whole idea with Vikings in, in Venice was nice. So I was reading a lot about Vikings coming into the Mediterranean and going around, you know, Normans, which are really, you know, Vikings settling in the northern parts of, of France, also coming into the Mediterranean and both conquering and fighting together with different kingdoms, you know, like in Sicily and yeah, lots of great stories. But anyway, so what we ended up with was a story where you have um, some kind of ancestors of the Vikings coming to find something of interest, right? And a treasure from these old Vikings coming to Venice. So I asked my dear friend and colleague Knut Narum uh, to write the story together with me. And we sent the idea to Kawasano and we had to arrange this with Egmont, uh, the Nordic uh, publisher. So they, they commissioned the story. So, and it, yeah, so it was really nice to see Kavasana working in, in that bigger format, you know, four strips. Because normally he's, he's working in the, in the pocketbooks, of course. So. so he got more room, which was wonderful. And um, yeah, then we did the script, Knut and I. Uh, I did the scribbles, which you can see here. And, and what was very difficult, and th th this, this was, okay, so, just imagine, this is very hard for me because I'm such a huge fan of Cavazzano and I had this opportunity to work with him and I would just love to show him uh, what I could do with the drawings, you know. Look how good I am, look how good, please, you know, Cavazzano, il maestro. But what I needed to do was to keep the scribbles so simple that I didn't force the hand of Cavazzano. I, I just wanted to give him every kind of opportunity to do his artwork, right? I didn't want him to follow my scribbles. So the, the hardest thing about the whole process was that when I was doing the scribbles, I just had to show uh, uh, Cavazzano, 
you know, what is the action, what is taking place here, but not, you know, forcing him to make any kind of uh, decisions on my behalf, because it was really up to him. And this was so hard. I was sitting making these drawings and making up the whole story. And I just wanted to, to do nice drawings for Il Maestro, but I had to do it very simple. But then after that, uh, Cavazano was sending me by email his pencils, you know, as he was working with the story. And I, I, I could, you know, tell him that, well, that door needs to be opened the other way and we have to do this and the balloons have to be there <laughs> and that was so silly because you know me being such a fan you know and i had to say oh please il maestro mm -hmm. do you have to do like this but of course Cavazano, being such a gentleman he, he he didn't have any problems with you know what i was saying about you know this door is opening this way and this door is opening that way and during this whole period, whenever I got an email from Kamasano, you know, it, it really, it made me, uh, my, my wife is sitting over there, so I just have to check with, with her. Is, is, is it true that every time I received an email from Kamasano, I was running around the house. I was so inspired. I, I could be working around the clock, you know, for days, just having one email from Il Maestro, right? Yeah. So it, it, was, it was wonderful. It was totally wonderful. And I'm going visiting Cavazano on Monday. And I have a little birthday, well, a big birthday card for him uh, that I'm going to give him because he's turning 75 now, the 19th of October. So it was wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful. And the collaboration with Francesco Artibani? Ah, oh, yeah. Wow, so we are talking about these gentlemen uh, because uh, Artibani has been working with, with um, Cavazano for years. And okay, so it's like this, okay? You, you are interested in comics, you work with comics, right? So you know, like, okay, say you heard about Will Eisner, right? And you might have heard about like Neil Adams, uh, John Bushima. Um, all of these um, are, gentlemen, you know, it could have been women, but okay, these are gentlemen. They are the most humble. They are the most uh, nice people that you could ever meet, right? So I remember first time I met um, Will Eisner, we were talking about how to carry the action on the page from the left to the right and then having to turn the action from right to left which is very difficult when you're always reading not manga of course <laughs> going the wrong way but with a master like Will Eisner we just we were talking shop we were talking how do we do this you know so if, if I'm just a fanboy and he's the master it doesn't matter because when you get together you're only working about this you're talking about how to make the storytelling work right and the same goes for you know neil adams john buscema and then cavazano and artabani so there are no egos there's not nothing to there, there's no competition there's nothing to conquer it, it's like what we are doing uh, it doesn't matter if it's me who does it or him or she or whoever Content is king. The storytelling is king. The only thing that matters is that I, I have this platonic view of storytelling But well, basically of everything. I think we are just trying our best to make like this interview It's like I have this impression that this interview has already been done It's Veronica and Ariel's uh, task to make this as 100% as we can, right? Yes. Yes. So, so this this is sort of my botanic uh, view of everything. So ego must never ever come between the idea and the true artwork, right? So what you need to learn. And this, this is me, fanboy, talking about Artibani and again, Cavazano and all the great masters. I feel it's like this. Okay, so you got some kind of talent, you got some kind of interest, you are using so much time 
becoming um, some kind of a craftsman or woman and you're getting better and better at what you're doing, right? So your ego is growing and growing. You're feeling that you are more and more important, right? At a certain time. And then you understand that you don't mean anything. You know, it's like Johann Sebastian Bach writing on every sheet of paper in the glory of God, right? We're not doing this for ourselves. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing, you know, drawings for me. I'm doing it for the readers, yes. But I'm, I'm doing it for something that will live long after that I'm dead. So me, my ego is nowhere there. It, it's, it's not in the process. So what happens when I'm working with Artibani and Carzano is that whatever we are changing in, they will change whatever I'm drawing. I will change whatever they are writing. It's all because it, the only thing that matters is the story that we leave behind. Because we all, we are soon becoming dust. But these stories will go on forever, long yes. after I'm dead. It's beautiful. It's, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> there are many of your works exhibited here at Car Gallery. Which is your favorite and why? Well, there you go. Uh, that's a problem, you know. <laughs> I've, I've, I remember once um, sitting at some kind of a festival or a book fair or whatever. And I've, I'm sitting working for hours. I mean, literally. Hours. This is Christine, my wife is here. Uh, so now we are, uh, it's uh, five years and nine months since we went visiting Neil Adams, right? That, that was my last day off. That was my last one day of holiday, okay? That's five months, no, five years and nine months, right? So soon to be six. And now I've been working, haven't I? Yes. And we've been walking, working first and then walking around Rome, which is a wonderful I mean this is the city this sense of the whole world you know this is here you know this is Rome so I love it I love every second of it but I'm still working so at this festival I remember being asked which of the ones dedication the drawings that I've done during the whole day that I was most pleased with just like you were asking and I had to stop you know thinking Okay, so it's like I ended up asking, okay, so today you have been breathing all day, haven't you? So was the one special breathing, you know, breath of air that you took today that you are very pleased with? One, or is it like you're just breathing all the time and you enjoy breathing because it's part of you living, right? Yes. That's my drawings. It's just a breathing. And so I'm very pleased. I was very impressed when I entered and there was a second room and there was lots of originals. I, I didn't know, I've, I couldn't remember even that, <laughs> that we sent these originals. Um, anyway, so it's a wonderful exhibition because it's very varied, okay? Uh, so yes, I, I like it. It's, it's, it's like, you know, like bambini, you know, you have children, you know, you love them all. But having said that, mm, okay, so if I have to choose, okay, if I have to choose, um, I did a pencil, uh, it's not a scribble, it's more like a sketch for the cover of that uh, Menace in Venice story that Cavasano did the original for. And the reason why I like my pencil sketch is that Cavasano really liked it. And his original is very close to my pencil. So he said that, uh, actually he said in an email that, okay, it, it, it's all your work apart from the moon because he didn't, he didn't draw the moon because I, I put in a moon. There's always, it's nice to have a moon on the cover, you know. So he, he got rid of the moon. Otherwise it's more or less my drawing that he has just cleaned up and inked. So because of, yeah, so if I have to choose, it would be that one pencil drawing, yes. Because of Cavazano, of course, Il Maestro. Il Maestro. <laughs> Another future plans? Yes, we have lots of plans. We have lots of plans. So, 
Okay, let me let me. Okay, I, I I can tell you this. Okay, there are so many stories that we are already working on. So I'm working now on the Christmas story for next year. Okay, so this year's Christmas story is already done, and it's is happening on Bear Mountain where Scrooge McDuck's first story took place. So we're going back to Scrooge uh, Scrooge um, background in back up at, at the at the Bear Mountain. So that that's happening this Christmas in Norway as a special, like a thirty pages special story. Next year. I have only been drawing ducks, right? Maybe I should try to do something with dog noses. Maybe I should do some uh, Mickey Mouse, maybe. Ooh. So it's uh, that's really just a secret. Did, did I say that? Did I say that out loud? We have we have to cut it. No, we don't. No, <laughs> it's okay. So yes, we do have lots of lots of lots of projects. Okay. So. Okay, Ariel. Thank you for your time. Grazie mille to all the friends of Passion for Fun and remember the best duck story is yet to be told. Arvidechi!